In my part of the world at least, it's a frigid time of year, a time of icicles, melancholy, high heat bills, and all plans getting cancelled. They're all cancelled. You're not doing anything. But with all that comes the sweet respite of a warm domicile, hot drinks, heavy blankets, and the age-old opportunity to curl up with a good video game. I mean, let's not kid ourselves. You know, even with the advent of the endlessly scrolling, ever-refreshable feed of digital art and work, I still love a good art book. It's a concentrated, focused curation of work, the thought that goes behind it, and oftentimes some practical insight. Call it old-fashioned, but more often than not, when I'm looking for inspiration for my own work, I much rather turn to a codex than a Pinterest board. Art books also make great gifts for someone either interested in the craft or the subject matter itself. But art books aren't exactly cheap, so how do you know which ones are going to be worth your while? Well, here's a collection in no particular order of some of the books that I've happened upon in the last year that I really like. Now keep in mind, this has nothing to do with publication date. This is just when I've happened upon them recently. I have links for each of these in the description below to Amazon, and those links help me in return if you're interested. Now I love a good art of book, but not all art of books are created equal. There's an unfortunate trend with some art of books where they're just a collection of work that's already publicly available in the final product, the art just being specifically made for the art of book as a bit of a show, or the book just not being that insightful. I love art of books from live action movies, for example, but if I'm going into them looking for character design work, it's probably not going to be that practical. With all that being said, my first book is The Art of Ralph Breaks the Internet. The film it's from was good, I enjoyed myself, definitely prefer the original movie, but it wasn't a bad movie by any means. The amount of work that went into the movie on the art side though is something fantastic, and that's reflected in the book. There are so many things going for it. You have a ton of art from Corey Loftus. You have these updated or unified designs or takes on other existing Disney properties like The Princesses, since this movie is such a collection of different IP. But the thing that I appreciate the most is that this is a movie that takes place in the internet, and a lot of serious work had to go into visualizing something from nothing, essentially and making it such a lived-in world. So beyond the good art in here, I really like the practical value that you can see at play. Being able to use shapes and concepts toward an idea the same way a poet can put into words a complex and nuanced feeling or experience. They didn't just take the easy way out conceptualizing the various websites that Ralph goes to. And again, maybe you're not so keen on the idea of Ralph visiting the internet. But a lot of times as designers, our job isn't to come up with the thing, it's to make the thing work the best way we can. And I think that's definitely what they did here. This book is beautiful and vibrant, it's thickened with art, and it's absolutely worth your time. Now if you remember my character select co-host Mark, a few months ago he and his wife Alyssa invited me to a painting workshop put on by James Gurney. Now I wasn't able to get a ticket to the workshop before they were sold out, but Mark and Alyssa were kind enough to get me a signed copy of James' book Dinotopia, and it's incredible. Make sure you check out Alyssa's painting work in the description below too. You may have seen this book before, Color and Light. It's the painting book that almost every artist has on rendering forms, choosing color, and plein air painting. You may have also been watching ABC's Wonderful World of Disney back in 2002 when they did a limited series based on Dinotopia. I sure saw that, and it's not something you can unsee. The book Dinotopia, published in 1992, is a beautiful collection of paintings strung together with the narrative that James created. It's presented in a sort of journal format, and this is what I love about it. From the end user reader perspective, this is a story about what this society is like. But from the artist's standpoint, this is the realization of a world they had the idea for, they created a bunch of concepts, scenes, and characters, and then were able to assemble them into a cohesive narrative. Which is a really fantastic idea for a project, especially if you feel like you're more prone toward world building, you have a unique setting in mind, and you'd like to present your work as a narrative or story of sorts. Not to mention that, of course, the paintings are beautiful, the concepts are imaginative, they sincerely look like an explorer was simply capturing the real-world moments happening around him. They just so happen to happen in a society of dinosaurs. 
My third book is one that's not available on Amazon, but I still have a link below. It's a self-published book by character designer and teacher Bob Flynn called Little Figures. Now, when I was a kid, the book that I always looked at at the bookstore or Barnes & Noble but never bought was Play Food, the photography collection of food art by Eust Elfers. Little Figures isn't necessarily similar, but it gives me the same vibes of fun, creative photography. Little Figures is a collection of small clay characters that I could swear are made from Crayola model magic. Bob is usually a traditional pen and paper character designer, but some of the clay characters have the same energy and looseness as a good figure drawing or expression sheet. I always appreciate Bob's sort of counterpoint opinion on character design that refreshingly goes against the typical grain a lot of times, but it's not just to be contrarian, it usually comes from a place of established sensibilities. So I highly recommend you check out his work. We are bookending this list, right? Because they're art books, with another animated film art of book, and what better film to do that with than the best of 2019 and many other years, Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse. Now, I haven't said much on this channel about this movie, mainly because I'd like to do something dedicated toward it a little bit later down the line. But do not mistake that for me feeling any other way than incessantly loving this movie. We just saw it again two nights ago. This is probably the movie that I've seen the most times in theaters. Now, what's so great about this beautiful book, which was a gift from my wife, Tay, thank you very much, Tay, is that there are such a variety of styles that even made it into the final film, let alone the concept art that's behind it. You've got Shiun Kim's incredible character design work, comic art, matte paintings, storyboard work that was more directly reflected in the movie than most animated films. And even though this book is jam-packed, my only complaint is that I want more. I would buy three more books about the creation of this movie without a second thought. Here's a quick lightning round of a few other books I enjoyed this year, a few honorable mentions. This book, The Crash Bandicoot Files, is a collection of a lot of the early pre-production work for the original game, back when he was called Willy Wombat. I found this interesting because it gives a little insight into that process, and shows you the way the characters were sort of intended to look before they were constrained to that low poly count resolution. Another solid art of book was The Art of Incredibles 2. This is one that would have been nice if it were twice as thick. I sort of wonder about the thing I talked about earlier when art is just made for the book, but some really fantastic work in here, especially the Tony Fusil work on Winston Devereaux. Last one is The Art of Horizon Zero Dawn. You have some work by Loish in here, who's an internet favorite, and incredible world building all around, combining a very tribal culture and aesthetic with these massive techno beasts. And of course, a significant amount of work went into realizing that. Not to mention that the layout of this book is phenomenal. Again, if any of the books that I've recommended here piqued your interest, there are links in the description below to Amazon where you can get them yourself. Now at some point I'll need to make a video about the essential books that all artists need to have, or at least my own personal favorites. My shelves are overflowing with the preserved drippings of, of concept art. As an aside, it's not exactly a printed book, but if you haven't had the chance to read my story parcel yet, and you're in the mood for a digital comic, you can't go wrong. The deluxe version has some behind the scenes insight in the back, as well as an alternate version of the story, which is something that I always find interesting in other people's work. That's it for me today. I'm making new videos every week here on Character Design Forge. Subscribing on YouTube lets you know when new videos are made available. If this video was helpful for you, please give it a like. And if you'd like to support me in this channel, you can go to patreon.com slash bageldenizen. There you can get a ton of things in return, including a personalized video critique of your work at the Novice Bard tier. My Instagram, Twitter, Twitch, and Patreon are all Bagel Denizen, and you'll see them in a few seconds. Thank you so much for watching, and have fun creating.